I'm Steve Levine at One Hit Wonder, and um, pardon me. I wonder how we adjust, if we're going to talk about climate change, if we're going to talk about infrastructure, we need to change our overall thinking because we, we, we're geared towards production and sales. We're geared towards um, uh, an ever-increasingly uh, consumptive lifestyle. And we're, we're on the earth maybe a hundred years. Um, think about it. I, I wonder how we can justify, let's say somehow we were to live 300 years so that everything that we accumulate has some real uh, longevity to it for us, that we're able to actually uh, put it to use over a long period of time. Instead, what we have is within our 100 or less years, think about it, we're going to own individually maybe 10 automobiles. We're going to buy, I don't know how many mattresses and furniture. If we own a home, uh, we're going to paint. We're going to have to replace appliances, cabinets, bathrooms, roofs. The longest warranty on your home is your roof. That's 50 years. Now think about it. The earth is 10,000 years old civilization. We know it's older than that. I'm just, I'm going to throw out a number, 10,000 years. And our impact personally for our own benefit is a hundred years and then we're gone. So whatever we do for ourselves over that time in a hundred years, it, it, it's over after a hundred years. So that's 0.1%, I think, if, I, if I'm doing the math in my head right. 0.1%. And we can justify with that the amount of destruction we individually are doing to the environment, to the climate, because of the way we've structured everything. So think about this. You want to end up with the best tasting meal you've ever prepared in your life. But here's the problem. That best tasting meal that you're gonna prepare, you gotta jump in halfway through someone else's preparation or 90% or, or of the way through somebody else's preparation or 5% of the way through someone else's preparation. It doesn't matter. The problem is the same. If you don't have control over the parameters that are going to lead you to the result that you want, you're never going to get to that result because there are always going to be all of these other variables impacting that result. So here's my point. We have accepted the way that we do everything, this distributed mentality. You buy a piece of property, you build your house on it. The next guy has to buy a different piece of property, build his house on it, and so on and so on and so on. And pretty soon, the last guy is miles from downtown and miles from everything going on. So there's no sense of community with those people. And they, they tend to become isolated and protective of what they have. We need more of a sense of community. We need to pull things back together. So here's what I say. In the town of Madison, Connecticut, where I live and enjoy living, it's a wonderful town. But here's the thing. We are a coastline community. The water is going to rise. Nature is going to win. We should not build or continue building or remodel or whatever the properties along the water because it's a short-term resource consumptive solution for an individual family's vanity. You don't like it when you hear it, but it's the truth. We don't need to be there in terms of climate change and sustainability, why put structures in that harsh an environment when we know we're going to have to do more maintenance on them? Remember, 
our hundred years is insignificant compared to how long life has existed. And we need to be focused on how long life has existed. Otherwise, we are just, um, you, you know, throw the litter out, pour your oil down the drain. All the things that we would, in, in a good conscience, never think of doing anymore, we're doing in different ways. We're doing it with uh, uh, motorbikes that we need to drive into the woods or race motorbikes. Um, race bicycles. Um, motorbikes are carbon consumptive. I don't care how much you enjoy it. Auto racing, power boats. Um, think about this. We have created in our 400 years of civilized living in the United States, call it civilized, um, we've created these industries that somehow suddenly we can't live without. So we have uh, uh, fiberglass boats. Fiberglass boats wear out. That's all chemicals. What do we do with that, that hulk after it's worn out? We just leave them sitting there. You see them all over the place. We cannot continue along this path. So maybe we need more um, common ownership of uh, sailboats, more um, common development of clubs where we don't need to produce as many products as we do, but we still are all able to enjoy them. You know, the automobile is a perfect example. Think about it. You pay for an automobile 24 hours a day. You might drive it less than two hours a day. 365 days a year. That's a very poor return on investment, but you have to get where you want to go. All right. So we all rely on the automobile. When we find out that the automobile is, is damaging the environment, what do we do? We figure out another way to power the automobile. Of course, we're going to be doing it by mining lithium, which is environmentally destructive. And then what do we do with all of the old batteries that we produce? And what will be the environmental damage of the, the production? All of that. Here's the point. Why do we have automobiles? We have automobiles, the horseless carriage, because when we rode our horses into population density areas, horses would crap all over the place. So to resolve the manure issue, we created another environmental problem, the combustion engine. And now we're going to go and we're going to create another one. Why did all of this happen? Because we chose to, to distribute ourselves and build horizontally. And therefore, we needed to create the roads and the, the grid, the power grid, and the, uh, the, the water distribution, water collection, uh, school buses, trash collection, police, fire, and the, you name it. We built horizontally, and it was the wrong decision. So now, going back to our perfect dinner, we're going to come in to this with all the wrong decisions. And we're going to somehow invest a trillion dollars, two trillion dollars, a hundred trillion dollars, continuing to do the wrong thing without ever stopping to think, is there a better way? Shouldn't we be more uh, conscious of how much we have to burn up in, in, in an effort to just survive our hundred years? Shouldn't things be a little bit more logical? And I say, yes. So back to Madison, Connecticut and being on the shoreline. We're 34 square miles. We're about uh, 15 to 25,000 uh, people. Um, and I can remember as we would have to uh, bring my sons to school and athletics and, and all of their friends' houses, etc. Uh, you'd spend about a half an hour driving downtown, about a half an hour driving back up to where we live. Um, and we might do that multiple times a day. The reality is we need to think more about how can we cover 50 square miles in a half an hour by foot? How can we create a situation where that's possible to do? And the way to do it is um, uh, maybe uh, with the help of the Blue Oyster Cult and... Um, 
uh, Quadrophenia uh, by The Who, um, here's the concept. We stack square miles, one above the other, all the way up. We do sustainable construction, logical construction, but we build off the ground so that the wind, the water, the wildlife can continue on with their life. We build maybe a hundred feet up in the air and we, we make our first platform one square mile. And then we build another deck 40, 50 feet above that one square mile. And then individually we create Beautiful living space, sustainable interior living space, private, secure, soundproof, great air quality, phenomenal water quality, water collection, wastewater collection, so we know about uh, uh, population health and we can track certain things and we can filter that water and reuse it. Very important that it's all collected in one way, not through a distributed network where we don't know what we're getting, including road salts and everything else. But back to the building. We can create a structure where everything is brand new. And we can create it using repetitive members, repetitive structural members applied in, this, in a, a, a repetitive fashion so that a company like Boston Dynamics could build robots that could pick up a large structural member, carry it to place, position it, and do that over and over and over again. I'm talking about recreating the population density center. I'm talking about bringing everything in a 50 square mile area, the homes, the schools, the doctors, the, the retail, uh, the fire department, the ambulance, please, every, everybody into one structure. No cars needed. You need to get somewhere, use an elevator, use a staircase, use an escalator, just like they do in the phenomenal, gorgeous, dynamic shopping malls in Sydney, Australia. It's phenomenal and it's doable. It's just like the indoor living space at the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas. We've figured out how to make indoor space livable. And what we need to do is we need to eliminate all of the garbage that we have continued to repair and replace over and over and over again in 400 years, that's filled up landfills at a faster rate than maybe all of the years before that kind of devastation of the environment. So I wonder how are we going to accomplish a reduction 50% of our greenhouse gases by 2050 or whatever numbers uh, the current administration is throwing out. How are we going to do that if we keep doing the same thing we've been doing for 400 years and achieving the same result? All we've done is we've built an economy. We have employed people to build inferior products and we've applied them to the most expensive and most important aspects of our lives, our infrastructure, our homes, our building. And we continue to do it and we spend foolish money. We need to take a serious look at how to cut all of the waste all of the repetitive expense, all of the need to repave roads every 10 years because the weather beats the hell out of them. We need to get uh, either eliminate the roads or cover the roads. I say eliminate the roads, move everybody closer together so that our neighbors know each other and we can walk down and have breakfast together because we just go next door and, and knock on the door. We, we contact them by our cell phones. We don't worry about child care or senior care because we're not leaving somebody out in the middle of a two-acre lot uh, beside another two-acre lot wondering what they're going to do all day. They can safely just stand up and go where they want to go. 
It's a completely different way of living. And ideally, as an industrial engineer, if we eliminate all of the stupid expenses that we have, maintaining police cars, plowing roads and de-icing roads, de-icing roads so that we dump chemicals onto the road that eat up the cars that we pay so much money. It's all stupid. We've solved one problem, created another all the way through history. We got to stop, look at what we've done and come up with a plan. A plan that says like, like a, we're a McDonald's. We're going to eliminate all the walking waste, all the unnecessary motion, and we're going to deliver uh, consistent reliability time and time again. No floods, no hurricanes, no tornadoes. Um, we're going to build structures that, that are like the airplanes that we fly, that we fly for 50 years, the same structure, 600 miles an hour, same structure. And we can't build a house that, that will survive uh, a, a, a windstorm. It, it's, it doesn't make sense. And we keep doing it over and over and over again. I'd love to talk to the people that have the ability to make decisions. You know, you, you reach out to uh, uh, people. Uh, Jeff Bezos is going to spend a, a bunch of money uh, establishing offices for people. We shouldn't be building offices. We should be building population density centers. We should be planning for the people to work, live, educate, medicate, everything in the same structure. So we don't have to have a system to allow people to run randomly all over the place. It'll have a much, much, much smaller footprint. Think about it. Stack 50 stories, one square mile instead of building 50 square miles. You're on 1 50th of the, of the carbon footprint right there, effectively. So um, I, I, I've sent letters out. I've sent... Uh, uh, inquiries out uh, by by virtue of this post. Uh, I hope people will reach out and say, hey, some of this makes sense. Uh, uh, others I know will say you're a complete moron, but I've heard that before. Um, but the point is, we are going to have to get to total waste elimination if we're going to get to uh, a, a sustainable environment. We have to be invisible to the environment. And we're not going to get there uh, the way that we're living currently. And we need to find much, much more resource uh, conservative, yet comfortable and secure ways to live in our hundred years. Hey, folks, um, I'm going to smoke some more and have a wonderful day. Look forward to hearing from you.